Please welcome Ism. Family, peace, peace, good evening. Um, hold on, wait. Hi. I put all of this unnecessary pressure on myself to top Black Boy Wonderment because I felt like if I could do something better than that, then my momentum will only just keep, you know, keep going. And six months into it, bam, COVID fucked my whole shit up. Now I can't do no shows. I can't go out, I can't hang out with friends, and it just kind of robbed me of what I was really trying to do with wonderment, and, you know, the COVID cases hit a crazy apex, and I was just hearing sirens day in and day out, and it was just driving me up a fucking wall. And the isolation just really, really just pushed me into, like, my darkness and my anxiety worsen every day and and then the depression really hit and it hit hard and I found myself trying to find some sort of escape the escape from 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 the from the media from social media from the misinformation from the vaccines from the this and the that and I just kind of found myself with my tail in between my legs, crawling back to house music after I already said, you know what, I'm not doing no more house music. After Wonderment, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking a break from it. And here I am, you know, crying in tears. I can't sleep, I can't eat. And I just kind of knew that I couldn't relive what I did with Black Boy and Wonderment, but it was just time to just move on. And In the House have really helped me to move on. The most recent contribution to the American music scene is how it got its name. So-called house music was first made in the creator's houses, but it was also performed at clubs called The Warehouse and Powerhouse. However it got its name, it's one of the hottest things going, and as Jay Levine reports, may only be a matter of time before house musicians become heroes in their own home. They started playing house music at this Michigan Avenue hotel and health club last summer, and they've been packing them in ever since. It's the first time house has escaped the south side dance clubs or north side juice bars for a more upscale audience, though it's still a long way from sweeping the city. But in London, House has made it to the top of the pops faster than anything since the Beatles. All right, listen, we've got a new number one. You tell them about it. Steve Silk Hurley. <laughs> Steve Silk Hurley and his group J.M. Silk are now making their mark on the world of music while still relatively unknown in their own hometown. Check your body. Check, check, check. And they aren't the only ones. With Sweet D, Danny Wilson on keyboard, the DJ called Farley. Farley, Jackmaster Funk, one of the creators of house music, is ready to make a tape. It all starts with a heavy beat. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now I'm going to talk into the sampler right here. Work your body. And then we can play it from the keyboard. It stays into the sampler, and I can play it on the keyboard up and down the scale. Work your body. Work your body. It can have a fast or a slow effect. <laughs> like the chipmunk, you know, or... <laughs> then I'll bring in the percussion. Our congas, low congas. So now with the bass line or drum beat set, the rhythm in place, and the vocal all recorded, Farley and Sweet D are ready to make what in the record business is known as a demo. Work, work, work your body, work your body, work your body. Work your body. What were you trying to do when you start? Make some money. Although I was really basically trying to make a record for, you know, Chicago because I was here trying to gain more popularity than the next DJ that was next to me because it's a world in which uh, DJs come a dime a dozen and you have to have something to put yourself above the next guy. House has been very good to Farley and to others. 
But if it takes off like many believe it will, those $1,000 advances they've been getting may soon seem like peanuts. Jay Levine, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. I'm recording. Ha, 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 ha. God, I thank you for joining. I think that was the one. I think that was the one. Be watching all of the documentaries and, you know, clips of, you know, seeing people dance at Paradise Garage and Zanzibar and things of that nature just inspired me to just really jump back into the house thing again. And it's locked down, so it's not like I'm out here going on dates. I ain't fucking, I ain't doing nothing but being in the house and isolating. So all of that pent up sexual energy and that tension and the sadness and the depression and the anger just went into these really, really hard house beats that ended up giving me an escape that I really needed. And now I can't lie. I can't lie. COVID season one and season two wasn't all bad. I can't stunt. have a tie. The winners of the 2020 award for best dark themed short are Broken Like and Mayamo Jesus. Congratulations! And here's a few words from our winning filmmaker. Hi, this is Stephen Rutherford, director of Broken Like by The Ism. Huge thank you to the Artist Forum. It's a great honor to be nominated for this award. Huge thank you to Ism for trusting me implicitly with dangerous things like snakes. Uh, thank you so much to um, Justin Allen Miller for the visual effects and to Cooper Billington for your assistance. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Arts Forum. This is an honor. Um, thank you to Cooper Billington. Thank you to Justin Allen Miller who made my head explode at the end and in real life. But most importantly, thank you to Stephen Rutherford for all your hard work and for being the only white man that I will be in a dark Brooklyn basement with a bag over my head and a snake around my neck for. So thank you. And to everybody that's been so supportive and rocking with me, I love y'all. Thank you very much. Hold on, club time. Darn it, darn it. I missed my cue, sorry. Since we can't go to the club, I'm gonna bring the club to you. So you better be sipping something and dancing. In, intense, 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 intense. He got the juice like yo, yo. You want a sip? How you know? This that the form after that he ain't on above the bastards. I am a yacht. I'm from the bastards. I'm from the insert the bastards like. 
honey, give me my thing. The scooper, give me my thing. Yeah, that piece of the thing, honey. Please follow my thing. Yeah, my thing. Hey, honey, give me my thing. Oh, that piece of the thing, Please follow my thing. Yeah, my thing. Hey, give me my thing. That piece of the thing, That piece follow my thing. Yeah, my thing. That piece of the thing, honey. That piece of in May of 2021, I lost my grandmother. And without really having much time to process that, um, six months later in November, my uncle passed. And for a while I had been beating myself up about it because I, it was harder for me to try to rebuild that relationship with someone who you know, made it so difficult for me to just be myself when I was younger. And um, the last time I saw him was at my grandmother's funeral and I hugged him and I told him I loved him and I had been meaning to reach out and meaning to go see him and I just, I'm kind of giving myself um, time to process um, that regret. Don't be like me, thinking you have all the time in the world and you don't. Make it right while you can. We've got breaking news for you now. Multi-platinum rapper, songwriter, and actor, DMX has died. This is according to the Associated Press. A new wave of grief is sweeping over hip-hop fans still mourning the passing of DMX as word spreads of another beloved rapper who is gone. Friends and associates are confirming that former bad boy artist Black Rob lost his battle with kidney disease and other health issues in Atlanta, just as many were realizing for the first time how gravely ill he really was. Biz Marquis has died at the age of 57. According to TMZ, the legendary rapper passed after a series of complications from diabetes that he's been fighting for more than a year. Michael K. Williams has died. He was 54. The game is out there, and it's either play or get played. The Wire actor was reportedly found dead in his Brooklyn penthouse Monday afternoon. He is survived by his mother. Michael's famous friends took to social media to share their condolences. Taraji P. Henson wrote, Rest well, my friend. Jesus, you will be missed deeply. Chance the Rapper shared, Thanks for all you gave to encourage, enlighten, and entertain people you didn't even know. Praying for your people. And his The Wire co-star Wendell Pierce posted an emotional tribute on Twitter, writing, Always truthful, never inauthentic, the kindest of persons. Like two mischievous kids, we would laugh and joke whenever we would meet. There aren't a lot of black men that I feel like I relate to in the entertainment industry, and Michael K. Williams is definitely one of those people. But one thing that I really want to drive home is that he was much more than Omar from The Wire. His filmography is insane. The things that he's done, the shows that he's been on, it's ridiculous. He was on Law & Order several times. Uh, he was rolling on when the bow breaks. He was scattering Superfly. Montrose, Lovecraft Country. So much. And one thing that I just, I just want, I wanted to do with this was to honor him. Because outside of the acting, this man was a dancer and a choreographer who wanted to tour with Janet Jackson who is one of my inspirations. And I just, I just wanted to honor this man. In June, Michael gave a theatrical tribute to the late DMX at the BET Awards. The actor, who bore an uncanny resemblance to the rapper, delivered a passionate monologue in memory of his friend. Damn! I 
I said I'm slipping, I'm falling, I got to get up. Get back on my feet so I can tear it up. Body, face, all up in this place. He's a chocolate kind of shame. Tell me he about to get mad because I'm better than the mother fucker. You wish you had a brother all up in this mother's pussy better than a mother I ain't up for the Joneses, put this house on up for your phones and stand in the end of this pose and give it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah.